Lesson 10, Solving Equations Involving Fractions and Decimals. So yesterday we kind of talked about clearing our fractions. Um, again, today, whenever we have equations that involve decimals, it's easiest if we try to clear the decimal first, just to make it an easier equation to work with. So similar to our fractions, using fractions, it says, it's also often easiest to, here, we're going to multiply, we did this yesterday, by the least common multiple of our denominator to get an easier equation to work with. So make sure you fill that in. And again, this is going to be a lot like yesterday, but one of the things as we start now is we're going to be trying to write equations. So when we write our equations as we read this problem, you and a friend have ordered a pizza. You ordered a medium pizza with three toppings. Your friend orders a large with one. A medium pizza with no toppings costs five forty-five. A large with no topping costs seven ninety-five. You pay the same amount. What is the price of one topping? So, if we are going to write this, this is what we kind of want to be thinking. First off, we're looking at our pizza costs. How much it costs, plus the number of toppings that we have. So, if we are looking at your pizza and the number of toppings. Your pizza, as we are looking at it, which was a medium, okay, is $5.45. So that cost is $5.45. Plus, we know we had three toppings. And it's three times the number of toppings times the cost of the topping. Well, this is what we don't know, the cost of our topping. We're going to have that be our X. That is going to be equal to. Okay, if we are looking at the pizza cost of our friend. So how much did our friend's pizza cost? It cost $7.95. Plus, again, the number of toppings. So please write this down. Times the cost of a topping. And again, what we don't know is the cost of our topping. You could use C. We could use, we're going to use the cost of our topping, keeping it the same. And here we only had one topping. Now, some of the work I saw in some of your quizzes um, the other day is that when you look at this equation, some of you are trying to do too many steps at once. For example, you decide, okay, I'm going to subtract 1x from both sides, which I agree. But then you do something with the seven ninety five too. Don't do that. Don't only do one step at a time. So five dollars and forty five cents plus we are going to have two x is going to be equal to seven dollars and ninety five cents. Again, one x minus one x. We don't put that as x. That is zero x. And remember, zero times x just equals zero. So we only have seven ninety five. We are now going to subtract five dollars and forty five cents from both sides of our equation. As we do that, 2x is going to be equal to $2.50, and we're going to divide them both by 2. And x in this case, one topping is going to cost us 1.25, which, what is the price of a topping? $1.25, as you are looking at that. Make sure you have everything written down. If you need to pause the video, please do so before you go on to the next section. Again, you are going to always be asked to write a verbal model. And I know some of these you could actually solve without doing this. It says Don and Jenna, Jenna are growing their hair. Don's hair is 10 inches long and it grows at a rate of 0.46 inches per month. Jenna's is 18 and it grows at 0.54 inches. In how many months will their hair be the same length? Same length means we want them equal. So we're looking at where does Dawn's hair start. So our verbal model is going to be Dawn's hair length plus its growth times the month. The growth, and we're looking at per month times the number of months. Then we are looking at Jenna's hair and again we are adding how fast it grows 
per month. And this is times the number of months. And again, what we're trying to find is in how many months. This is what we don't know. We do know if we are writing our equation. So this is the equation that would go right in here. I'm going to do it up here because then there's a little more room to solve. We had her length was 10 inches plus 0.46 M. Jenna's hair length started out at 8 inches. It's growing faster. Plus 0.54 M. Again, my goal as I look at this is we don't want to have these decimals. So if I'm looking at this problem, one of the things that we talk about is that if I don't want to have decimals, I can take everything and multiply it in order to move the decimal over two places. I'm going to multiply everything here by 100. And if I multiply by 100, I am now going to be left with 10 times 100 gives me 1,000 plus 46M equals multiplying by 100. 8 times 100 gives me 800, plus 0.54 means move the decimal over, 54M. And now I don't have any decimals to work with. Again, keeping your steps so that you only do one step at a time, 46M, get all the variables on one side. 1,000, this is 0, equals 800, plus if we are... Here, 54 minus 6 gives us 8M. As I look at this problem and I am solving, I'm going to go now and subtract my 800 from both sides. If I do that, I am going to be left with 200 is equal to 8M. And dividing both sides by 8, M is equal to, in this case, 25. So our solution is 25 months, two years, and one month, if we wanted to write it that way, okay, is when we are talking about Dawn and Jenna having the same length hair. It's a long time to be growing your hair. without cutting it. So make sure you answer the question. The question is when, when in two years, in 25 months as we are looking at that. So again, if we're trying to clear our decimals, we notice that here we have one number behind the decimal point, one number, two, and two. So in order to clear our decimals, what we are gonna do is we are going to multiply, and in this case, we want to multiply by 100. The reason we want to multiply by 100 is when we multiply by everything here by 100, we will no longer have a decimal. So the 6.62x and the 0 0.12, those when I multiply by 100 will give me, this will move over two places, so 230x plus 390 minus 662x equals 12. I'm going to combine my like terms around the same side of the equal sign. This is where some of you are making a really terrible mistake. And so when you look at this and I add 230 plus a negative maybe 662, I'm going to have a negative 432x plus 390 equals 12. What do I need to do now to get the negative 432? I'm going to subtract 390 from both sides. When I subtract 390, I'm going to have a negative 432x is equal to a negative 12. And remember, minus 390 is going to give me a negative 378. I am now going to take and divide both sides by my coefficient of x, which is negative 432. Notice no x's because you are leaving this so that when you divide, you have 1x or x is equal to. And as we look at this solution, x is going to be equal to, if we do our um, division, positive 0 0.875. 
it is okay to have a decimal for an answer as you look at these. Um, you want to make sure if we would go back and do the check on our calculator. So on our calculator, we would want to do 2.3 times 0.875 plus 3.9 minus 6.62 times 0.875. And if you put this in your calculator right now, and again, if you need to pause the video to do that, you should get the answer 0 0.12, and it checks. Here's another one like we did yesterday with our fractions. You'll see more of these in your homework tonight. Um, and the key thing that you are working with is clearing the fraction. And how do we find this least common denominator? So we are looking at 3, 6, and 8. And we're looking at the smallest number that they both, they all go into. And so if I'm looking at this, I might be thinking of 6, and I have 6 is going to be 6 times 1 is 6. It can't be that. It can't be 12. It can't be 18. 24. 3 goes into 24. 8 goes into 24. I don't want to use 48, 6 times 8. I just want it to be smaller. So I'm going to multiply each side. And what I'm going to have you do when you do these is multiply every single term. So please write it like I do. Negative 2 thirds. Now we're going to put a parenthesis is equal to. We're going to put our parenthesis and then we're going to put 1 6 x. Then we're going to put our parenthesis and we're going to put 5 8 So we pretty much wrote the whole problem. It's just that we're leaving room for writing in multiplying by our least common multiple. 24 over 1, and I'm going to multiply every single term by 24 over 1. So what I actually did here is by multiplying this, we use the distributive property. And we took all of these times 24 over 1. So by writing it out this way, you're less likely to make some mistakes. So we actually now have negative 2 times 8. How did we get 8? And again, as you're looking at this, 3 goes into 24 8 times. So we keep the negative 2 and the 8. 6 goes into 24. 6 goes into 24. We are looking at that 4 times. So I'm going to have equals 4 times. 1x. 8 goes into 24 3 times. So I'm going to have plus 3 times 5. I'm now going to simplify this. Negative 16 equals 4x plus 8. This is a much simpler problem to solve if I'm looking at oh, not 8. We're not adding those. We are multiplying. 15. This is a much simpler problem than the original one for most of you. We now want to subtract 15 from both sides. Now, for some of you on this side, you might want to think of it as plus a negative 15 because we actually are adding those together and getting a negative 31. Here, get 0, 4x. It is still okay that when we look at this problem, we're going to divide both sides by 4, that x is going to be equal to, we can leave it as a fraction because that's how we started, negative 31 over 4. We could write it if we want it as a mixed number. 4 goes into 31 7 times, that's 28. And 3 fourths, but we are not going to change our answer to a decimal. If you start with a fraction, keep your answer as a fraction. And again, just to make sure for those of you, if you were going to check this, the easiest way to check it is to use this number. And I would have checked and put in my calculator 1 6 times negative 31 over 4 plus 5 8. And the question is, is, is that equal to negative 2 thirds? And if we look at this problem, as we are looking at this one, this, um, if you try and put this in your calculator, the question is, does it equal negative 0.6 repeating? Because that's what negative 2 thirds is. So if you put that whole thing in your calculator, 1 divided by 6 times negative 31 over 4 plus 5 eighths, I do believe you're going to see that it checks. 
Now we really only have two other questions or three other ones to look at here. And what I want you to think about first and then um, and pause the video is what should you multiply each thing by? And I want you to kind of talk to your um, shoulder partner and write it right by each one, pause the video, and then turn the video back on after you have decided with your shoulder partner. 10 for the first one, only one number behind the decimal. 100 for the second, two numbers behind the decimal point. Four, six, and six, the smallest number that they all go into should be 12. Again, what I would like you to do right now is pause it and try each of these, and then I'm going to put the answers up for you. I finished the first one. I really want you to take a look at the second one. Here is something that a lot of you are doing. You will add this 7x, and at this point, you will divide both sides by 112. The 112x is not by itself yet. You have to subtract 63. You have to have the variables on one side of the equal sign and the numbers on the other. Now, if you did not add 7x and you subtracted 105, then you had the number equal the variable. Now you can divide by 112 to get x in this case. And since we started with a decimal, our answer is best left as a decimal. 0.5625. I wanted to work this last one with you. I multiplied everything by 12. When we do that, 4 goes into 4 once and into 12 three times. I'm going to put 3 times 3p. Three 6 goes into 12 twice and into 6 once, so I have minus 2 times the 5. 6 goes into 12 twice and into 6 once equals 2 times 1p. It is very important, this step, that you don't forget this step. This is 9p. You don't just put the 3 down here. You have to multiply those. Minus 10 is equal to 2p. Now, again, I want all the variables on one side, so instead of subtracting 2p, this time I'm going to subtract 9p from both sides. As I do that, I get negative 10 is equal to negative 7p. I'm dividing by negative 7. And when I divide by negative 7, I get p is equal to 10 sevenths. I want to leave it as a fraction, 1 and 3 sevenths, and I am done. Your work today, as you work on worksheet D10, is to make sure here, tell what you're going to multiply, and then solve it. So the first answer that I'm going to look for is what would you multiply by? Then go through and do the solving. So first, what are you going to multiply by? Then go ahead and solve it. As you look at question seven, you're trying to see what they did wrong. And they kept them as fractions, which you can do that. You could have subtracted seven ninths, but find where their mistake is, is what you are looking for. And in here, you're just asked to solve these. As you do 14 and 15, try and write those story problems. Try and see if you can interpret what those should be to finish those off. Um, and then um, and be ready if we would take a quiz on this fraction and decimal stuff, probably on Wednesday's class or the next time we meet. So making sure you're solving these. Um, get rid of your fractions. And if you need an extra piece of paper, make sure you use that.